Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this episode it's number two in the series of three episodes that I've put together on doing gigapixel panos. This time I'm going to be concentrating on how to fix color banding. Now you might recall from the previous video, which I also have a link to that in the description of this video, as well as other links too of interest of other tutorials and other information I have concerning this that when you're doing just about any type of photography, you could get some type of color banding, but it's very evident when you're starting to get into these big, huge gigapixel panos, especially when you're shooting across a very clear blue sky. So what happens when you start seeing this is that there's not enough colors to fill in this very, very gradual gradient from very high on top to very low near the ground. And so things kind of get crushed, but they do so more when you're working with a panorama in 360 because it also has to stretch. So no matter what you do, you always want to be working in 16 bit. And as you saw in the last video, I was doing a lot of 16-bit TIFFs, but at the very end, once it's hosted, it's going to be turned into a JPEG. And whether you can upload it as a TIFF or a JPEG, then still the software that's going to put the tiles together to make that seamless 360 view will be JPEG, and then they'll be curved. So you got all this crushing going on that's now working in an 8-bit world. So what we can do is avoid some of that in two ways. First, this episode is going to show how to fix it, also a little discussion about how to avoid it. The next episode, episode number three of three here will then show the ultimate way to fix this which is to do a sky swap. Now that's completely different from doing a sky swap for a normal uh, 2D type of realm. Um, when you're in 360 you have to have something that's seamless on the other side. You're going to have a problem with Zenith. So how do you do that? I'm going to show how that's also done. That's coming up in episode three. But first let's tackle what it takes to just do a standard color banding repair across the sky on a 360 panorama. So let's start out by just quickly taking a look at the problem. Uh, this, as you may recall, is from a panel that we worked on in the last video. And it's been done in Mars Pano, and I've also got a link to all these three. You can see there's three up here that I'm gonna be covering. Um, what we're gonna be doing, the first two is in this. If I zoom out here, look at all that banding up in the sky. Now you might be seeing a actual a exaggerated banding because of how YouTube would crush some of this. So just real quick, uh, to see this better as we're going through this process, it is good if you change the settings on your YouTube player to see this on 1080. So that will then reduce it. So you can actually see the real stuff going on here once we get to fixing it. But you can see, look at all the banding here, all those purple lines. And that's because there's just not enough colors. This gets crushed. None of this showed up, even in the final JPEG or the final TIFF. Didn't matter. No matter how you load it into Mars Pano and a lot of these other hosting services for 360, it's just going to show up this banding. It's kind of nature of the beast. Now, if there was a lot of clouds, you wouldn't see that. But look at all that banding all the way around. Now, the fix that we're going to do in ultimately in episode three is to do a sky swap. So that will be in the next episode and that's where ultimately we have no banding because we've done this sky swap. So not too looking too bad. So that's what we're going to do in the next episode. In this episode though what we're going to do is we're going to fix the banding with a new technique that I'm going to show you. Now look at this. It's using the same sky but the banding is almost practically all gone. Little uh, aside here is that some browsers will show this different Differently. For instance, Safari on uh, Mac uh, tends to do a great job on this. Also on an iPhone, you're probably seeing a lot less banding, probably none at all here. And even on an iPhone, if I go here on the retina displays, you're probably not seeing as much banding. But so depending on your system, you're going to see more or less. So what we have to do is detect the potential for banding based off of what somebody could be using for their browser. So anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to be concentrating on this one here, this megapixel panel that was fixed. So let's get into the steps. What I've done is this is after uh, doing the steps that I showed in uh, episode one where we have this very large TIFF file. And once again, make sure you're always working in 16-bit TIFFs. And you can make sure of that by going up to image mode and making sure that it shows these are 16-bit TIFFs. So now that we've got that loaded, 
what we want to do is we need to resize this for using it in marzipano. And a lot of these, like I showed uh, in the last video, there's limitations on these various toasts on what you can do. So what we'll do is we'll resize this to the marzipano size, which is 23,000 pixels wide. So let's just go to 23,000 pixels wide, and that's going to make it just a little bit smaller and uh, so that we will also be a little faster to work with, but not much. So we'll just go ahead and say, okay, and by the way, resample it by cubic smooth gradients and that will also help out um, smoothing things out when you do have to resize it. Anyways, this should be done in one of the first steps that, uh, that you go through so that you preserve all this 16-bit information as much as you can. Then what we're going to do is we're going to start working on uh, doing some of the other edits that we wanted to do. So with this, this was just straight out of PT GUI, and I'm just going to repeat the process of what we would do for doing the, uh, the ground edit. So let's zoom in here just so that it fits. I'm going to duplicate this layer by doing Control J. Then I'm going to go up here to uh, Filter and I'm going to go to Camera Raw Filter and I'm just going to add, like I did last time, that very simple uh, preset which I use for doing exteriors on 5K. The problem is, is that it will apply this globally and we only want it to affect the ground. So we're going to mask that out real quick. And just to show you what this preset is, let me go ahead and load it. So it will apply it. And then I'll go over here to the settings once it is. And remember, this is moving a little bit slower um, because we're working with very huge files. So let me go up here. And you're also hearing the fans whining away at times on my CPUs down here, It's even though it's under my desk. So real quick, if you want to pause this, write these down what they are. Contrast up five, highlights down, shadows up a bit, whites up a bit, blacks down, clarity up, and just a little bit of vibrance and saturation. Also at this point, add your sharpening, click OK. So that's going to apply that, but if we do this to the sky, then we're going to worsen the problem. We're going to start crushing those colors, crushing those levels and the curves, and it's just not going to look as good. So what we have to do, let's just go to Layer, Mask, and let's then uh, Reveal All, and let's pick then, like we were going to do a sky swap, let's go over here and let's select a color range within the sky. Now I've already done it here, you can see it, but basically you would sample down here at the bottom, and then you would take your plus tool and then start click, 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 click all the way up to get all these various colors that are in the gradient of the sky. So you can see how that's now selecting black is unselected. Now, there's a lot of the ground showing up and that's fine. You can play with the fuzziness, but we'll also just delete that real quick if we need to. And we'll just say, okay. Now, once that is applied as our selection, we can refine it. For instance, we'll use a, a quick mask tool and we'll just go along here along the mountains and using the Alt key, holding this down, we'll just drag across here and make sure that it is getting in the ground. Same over here, almost all the city was selected there, so we don't need that. So once again, hold down the Alt key on quick select, brush it along there so we get that. Now that looks good. Then at this point, all we have to do is once the quick select is done, go over to the mask and hit delete. Okay, so that got rid of that. To make sure it's also not affecting any of the ground, zoom out a little bit, just take a polygon tool and then we'll just draw, you can even probably do this with the marquee tool, but just draw around there, you have to reverse your colors and then hit the delete key. Okay, so everything is there. So that looks pretty good, but you would think, okay, now we're done and ready to process this. And if we did, we'd have that first looking panorama here, which was the original before doing the sky swap where we have all the banding. So that's going to show the problem. But when we look over on uh, Photoshop here and we zoom in, we don't see any of that. Even if we were to save this as a JPEG, that banding isn't there. So let's do some early detection on that. It's going to be coming from this layer because remember the top one is just ground. In fact, we'll just call him ground, GND, so that we know that's what that is. So this would then be the sky because the ground is blocking that. We can do a couple things. One, we can go over to channels and select the different channels. So we can take a look at red. We can zoom in here a bit and see if we see banding. And there's a little bit on the red channel, on the green channel, a little bit down here also, and blue, there's a bunch down here near the bottom on the blue. But when we're looking at it in its totality for all the colors here in 16-bit, we don't see that.
So another way to do this, which is I'll give you a lot more accuracy, is something that's going to seem very bizarre. But this is what I call, it's often known as a solar curves layer. So we're going to go up to layer, we're going to make a new adjustment layer, and it's going to be a curves layer. I'm going to call this one solar curves. And what we're going to do is along the line here is select a bunch of points. Okay. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of those points and make this funny waveform. So it just doesn't have to be accurate here, but the idea is you have a whole bunch of these ups and downs, sinusoidal waveform, making this look like this. Now it's making the picture look just, just horrid, but that's what we want. Because what we're going to be able to do then is we're going to be able to go in here and see where this banding's coming from. So the more of these you have in there, the more you're going to see. Let's just get rid of that. Now, if we zoom in here, we can start seeing there's banding. So this is exaggerating it so we can see where the banding would be coming from. For instance, if we were to apply the whole sky, and I'll just do a shift click on the mask here, where it had um, all our, we can see there's still banding, and it just happened to move it around. So we're gonna get banding just in different places. So that's why we wanted to not uh, be editing the sky. So how do you get rid of it? Well, the best way to do that that I found, it's a very simple technique, we're doing megapixel panels, is to add a little bit of noise. So what we're gonna do is take the bottom layer, which remember would be the sky, we're gonna duplicate that layer, and then while we have solar curves on and zooming in here a little bit to see some of that banding that we have, let's go out here a little bit, we see a whole bunch of it right there, we're gonna go up to filter, to noise, and we're gonna add noise. Now it doesn't take a whole lot of noise to get rid of it, and as you can see here with just using a value of four, with distribution uniform and without monochromatic checked, that banding went away over here. So you can click this on and off to see the difference of the banding. And usually now, if you go to a lot of these tutorials on doing this technique, they'll say, oh, just add one, just add two. Well, that's for very small stuff. So we've got a very large image here and it's very much detail. It's a meg, it's a gigapixel panel, big gigapixel pano. So we need to have a little bit more noise. So anyways, you can see that basically took care of it. But what's gonna happen is you're going to have some noise. Let's click OK and that'll add the noise. Now, if we get rid of our solar curves layer so that we can zoom in, let's go into 100%, and we can see that we have grain. So without this, which is our noise layer, it's a smoother, with it we have grain. Now the grain is starting to affect some of the mountains down here because I didn't mask all that out. So you can go like layer mask reveal and then take an eraser tool and then start erasing some of that away. And we'll just lower the size here a little bit on that eraser tool. And then you could go over the mountains and just fix that as you needed to. And you can see I didn't quite get everything here for the ground. Some of it was uh, not quite right. So I could even erase some of that off of here and just make all those little final adjustments at this point so that that all looks good. Let's go in 100% again and make sure we don't have a whole lot of grain around the mountains. But what's going to happen is when you go in 100%, you're not going to see as much of that. So what what that would look like then when we finally go export this out, when we'd save this as a JPEG and then load it into Marzipano, then we have this result. And as we zoom out on that, we can see that that banding is almost completely gone. And all that it was, was just adding noise to the sky and just a little bit. So it was just four pixels. Let's zoom in 100% and see what that does. Now, the ground features are preserved, super tack sharp, but we do have some grain in the sky. You might think, well, maybe you could do a little blur, surface blur, Gaussian blur. Well, you know, you can try it, but from my experience, that just makes the problem worse. It's not getting the gradient. The thing about the noise is that adding noise gets uh, adds a different edge to these bands. Well, once you blur that, then you're no longer uh, making those edges rough, which then displays have a better time of putting them together. Once you smooth them back out again, you're gonna see the return of that issue. You can play around with that by testing with your solar curves layer. So now that we have, for instance, uh, this layer here, which I'll label this so we don't forget about, that was noise four at uh, level of four. If you were to take that and try to do a blur on it, then you would see something else would get added. So for instance, let's go up here and do T, 
the, for uh, the uh, filter, we'll go to blur. And if you were to add like, let's say just a Gaussian blur to it, well, look at all that banding that came up. It actually got worse. No matter what you do to lower it, there's still gonna be some type of banding. So you might be able to get a little bit of help with that, but I just really don't recommend it. So anyways, just adding a little bit of noise to it is usually just enough to get rid of that. So the next thing though, the ultimate fix to this is that if the noise is unacceptable in your panorama, when you're zooming in 100% and you're worried that people are gonna see noise in the sky at 100%, well, eh, I don't know if people would necessarily be looking at the sky so much in a megapixel panel like this, but if, uh, and then you can see the ground doesn't have the noise, but if you're really not happy with any noise in the sky at all, then that's where episode two comes in, where we're just gonna completely change out this plain sky for something better so that it will look like this. So definitely stay tuned for that. So I hope this was useful for you. Once again, episode three that'll be coming up, we'll be talking more about the ultimate fix, which is doing a sky swap. So stay tuned for that. Also, if you haven't seen episode one yet, now's a good time to get a, a good refresher on that before getting into then episode three, because also I'll be assuming a few things from these last two episodes once I go ahead and publish that. So, but if you did like this video, you wanna see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.